In this video, I'm going to cover the regular trading hours on the uh, MES, and I'll go through a couple of the other products as well. Uh, for the trading day of August 31st, uh, 2023, I'm going to start out with the uh, MES. We're going to have a look at the dollar index as well as the 30-year uh, bonds, and I'm going to set it to the regular trading hours uh, and block out our times. Before I continue, I want to mention that I am a TradingView affiliate. Uh, you can get $15 off of your TradingView subscription if you are a first-time subscriber by using my affiliate link uh, in the description box below. Okay, so let's block out the AM session starting from Thursday at uh, 0930. And let's work through our AM session up into lunch. So. Looking at the five minute here on the MES, we can see that we opened up with a small uh, regular trading hours gap and we quickly formed some large inefficient candles that traded into the uh, opening range gap. We then traded higher in three pushes and we made our high of the day here at uh, 1035 uh, right uh, here in the AM session. And you can see that we had quite a bit of inefficient price action um, on the on the MES in the AM session. So the AM session was essentially a two-stage macro where we traded higher and then we traded lower into lunch. Most of the candles, as you can see, we did have an economic release today and most of the candles were quite inefficient. So we had long wicks on all of these candles um, and we ended up coming back to the regular trading hours gap. So you can see that there. The price came back in and, and actually we opened up and then closed through so we re-delivered and, re and rebalanced the opening range gap, which you can see here in the purple highlight. So we worked in a two-stage macro during the AM session. Uh, and let's have a look at the dollar index at that same time. So looking at the dollar index from 0930 to 1200, so looking at our dollar index during the AM session, uh, you could see that we basically had a choppiness on the dollar index during the AM session. We formed a high. We came down and we tested uh, some liquidity down to the downside here at uh, at 1100. So it was pretty pretty consolid. Uh, it was a consolidation on the dollar index during the AM session, and we can see that it was basically the same on the micro ES. So uh, pretty inefficient price delivery, fairly choppy. Um, looking at our one hour chart, we can see that during the AM session, we traded up into just about the consequent encroachment of this wick here. So almost got to the consequent encroachment of that wick, uh, but we did make it up to the 25% and we traded above the ICT rejection block here at 4536. So had you gotten in at the 25% of this wick or at uh, 4536, uh, you would have held on for about four points of drawdown and then just had a beautiful short. Um, in addition, you can see that, that back uh, during our regular trading hours on Friday the 4th of August, we had a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency that price was revisiting. So you did have an opportunity here, uh, whether you were trading 25% of the consequent encroachment of that wick, so that wick 25%, or if you were trading at the rejection block, you got filled in on an excellent short that you could have held for the remainder of the day. Let's talk about the lunch session. So from 1200 to 1330. And guys, we can see that the lunch session uh, basically traded down and targeted this sell side liquidity. And we drew down into this sell side liquidity, but didn't quite take it out during the lunch session. So our lunch session traded through the opening range gap, which you can see here. And we came down and we swept the sell side liquidity that we had located at 4519 quarters. We then traded higher coming into the PM session. So another two-stage macro down and up during the lunch session. Looking at our dollar index during the same time period, we can see this. So the dollar index essentially just traded down during the lunch session. And so it was kind of just working in tandem with the S&P 500. Um, I think that if you were looking at the dollar index at that time, you could see that it was falling throughout the course of the lunch session would have probably been a good cue that the market here, uh, you can see that we bounced off this order block here, uh, came down to the 75% retracement of this black candle or that order block. Then we traded into this sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency during the lunch session. So you had an opportunity to either get in short or get in long during the lunch session. 
Okay, and now let's talk about the PM session. Okay, guys, so PM session uh, was another two-stage macro, up and then down, and you can see that we came down and attacked the sell-side liquidity here at 45.15. All right, so another two-stage macro here during the PM session. Didn't really get any clean movements on Thursday. Uh, it was mostly choppy, mostly an inefficient price delivery. However, you can see that the PM session was a lot cleaner, a lot fewer wicks than the AM session. Uh, so your cleanest price action on the S&P 500 or the ES today came during the PM session. Dollar index during that same time period. You can see here that the dollar index uh, traded down and then up so basically another two-stage macro a good idea there guys when you saw that the dollar index made a low and came into this sell side liquidity and rejected it so basically a turtle soup pattern into this buy side and mount sell side inefficiency you can see with my cursor if you saw that the dollar index was rallying during the PM session that coincided with the S&P 500 trading down so you could have used your intermarket relationships there uh, to see to see that Okay, guys, uh, I'll just show you a quick picture of the NASDAQ. You can see the NASDAQ was mostly inefficient today, cleaner during the PM session than it was in the AM session. I don't think the NASDAQ was the best play today, to be honest with you. I, I think personally, and I, I am having a hard time even like getting these words out of my mouth, cleanest moves came on the, on the YM, guys. So just a clean move down during the course of the trading day on the YM um, had you gotten in. You can see that on the YM, we had this opening range, volume imbalance, and then we just attack sell side liquidity, attack sell side liquidity, these equal lows here. So if you were looking for the absolute cleanest instrument uh, with which to trade, the best trading vehicle for the day, I'm going to have to say it was probably the YM, believe it or not, just straight down into our sell side liquidity targets. Uh, you can see that we had choppiness on the NQ. We had some choppiness on the ES. YM was your cleanest uh, actor today. Uh, by a long shot. So if you are trading multiple instruments, if you're looking at, at multiple of these future pro futures products, the micro DAO, the micro YM was your cleanest movement on the day. So we just basically sold off the whole day on the YM. 30-year bonds, um, two-stage macro today. You can see that we opened uh, higher and we formed a high during the lunch session and then we traded back down to 121, uh, 121 spot 18. So basically a two-stage macro up and down on the 30-year bond. There was a period of time where the dollar index and the 30-year bond were trading higher, and that's right about when the ES uh, started to sell off. And so if you had caught that, that was a strong indication that we had a little bit of risk-off sentiment today. But other than that, guys, uh, your cleanest move was down on the YM today. NASDAQ was uh, pretty choppy, did not really want to go lower. Uh, Micro Russell was also a clean move down, not as clean as the YM. And then your uh, S&P 500 or MES, um, pretty choppy as well. Probably your cleanest move with, with the least number of wicks or inefficient price delivery came during the PM session. Okay, guys, in this video, we reviewed the price action in the futures markets for Thursday, August 31st, 2023. Bye-bye.